To tell the history of Ziga, we really have to go back to 2008. It was actually in the context of the election. I was working with the founders of Ziga and a radio producer, Ann Hepperman, on a project called Mapping Main Street. And what occurred to us was that Main Street isn't just some generic people or place, it's an actual real living location. The idea was to try and travel around the United States and then ask other people to also contribute to this map of all of these places. We saw many people participating in all different forms from photographs to stories on, posted on Vimeo um, that we wanted to kind of create a system that would allow others to create projects similar to this. It involved about 15 people. It was done in partnership with the Association of Independence and Radio and the, the uh, Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And so it was in that context we imagined Ziga. A way for people to create interactive documentaries without having to program. To really just make the, the media and the material that is online now and the recordings that people are making around the world accessible to anybody and not just accessible but truly useful to make it possible for people to make new things out of them and to let people's creativity run wild online. So one of the kind of core principles um, of our philosophy is that really this next generation of storytelling, collaboration is essential. I think part of making interactive documentary and working in this new space on the web is that the ways that newsrooms work and the ways that documentaries are made are totally different. Um, when really creatively approaching the web and bringing together media of different kinds, you need different types of people involved in that process. And so now what I'm finding is that the perfect team has totally changed. You can't just have sort of a traditional model where it's the one person that has an expertise with video and that's all you need. It's really important to get different perspectives, people that have experimented with technology, people that are experts in really kind of in-depth investigative ethnographic reporting. Now I want to work with a designer, a creative technologist, and a documentary producer. Our team is both on that principle, um, and many Ziga projects thrive on this kind of interconnection of different perspectives. And I think that's really different than what we've seen in the past. And the editor itself allows for media from different sources to be brought together. There's sort of an inherent collaboration in the process. That's a really, really different kind of way to think about collaboration and think about making a documentary. And we're also building more and more tools that allow for people to create large-scale collaborative projects like Mappy Main Street where you have a structure and a framework in place for many people to participate around a common topic. So from the very beginning, Ziga has been operating uh, in an interesting uh, context in relationship to copyright. Um, we are very, very strong believers in the importance of abiding by proper copyright law, but also want to make sure that it's possible for people to creatively use media to the greatest extent possible today. There's sort of a, the interesting sort of technical piece of it is that all of the media storage and, uh, and playback is happening via uh, third-party sources. And what we're doing is we're bringing in the information about those files, allowing people to manipulate and use those in new contexts, but the files themselves always stay in the same place. There's not an actual copy that is ever being made. We don't actually, uh, we're not, you know, Ziga <coughs> as a software isn't built around storing audio or video or images. Instead, uh, the, the pieces are built on uh, third-party media storage, uh, such as Flickr or YouTube. I think that it raises really interesting questions to be pulling things from all over the web and excerpting them and reinterpreting them. And whenever any project is being seen um, that is built with Ziga, all the credits for everything within the project are immediately accessible. We give proper attribution to any piece of media that is incorporated. But I also think that it's a question that books have raised for as long as books have been in existence. We generate auto credits lists. So in many regards, we believe that Ziga is actually helping to make documentary and multimedia storytelling more kind of appropriate in terms of copyright citation and attribution. If you're writing a book, and you have a quote in that book and you reference in your bibliography where that quote came from, you are essentially taking something from somewhere else, recontextualizing that information and referencing where it came from. And I think that that's what Ziga is doing.